I'm actually the other side of a mirror right now. Yes. And Harry's forehead still looks that big. It's crazy. <laughs>
why my chest wouldn't grow. Bang about. Why can't I strap it? Do you not know how to use straps? No. What are you doing? That right? yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. I want to let everyone know that we're coaches. You should listen to what we do, what we say, even if we can't do it ourselves. Oh. Use straps. Good. Good. Come on, Ryder. Good. Two more. One more. Go on, all the way there. Yeah. That was too heavy, man. <laughs> that was too heavy. Don't train your ego. Don't listen no, to Harry. Ego, don't you? We're not all as um, strong as Harry. Normally, we'd use normal D handles, but in all honesty, I've snapped three pairs of D handles. Oh, I've snapped three D handles this year, so we have to use a metal one so they don't snap anymore. Oh, you're cool. <laughs> no, shit, actually, D handles are badly made, aren't they? Badly made. I need some more weight. I'm going to go five and a half plates. Five and a half? Yeah, yeah. What's on there now? Four. Five and a half. Yeah. Go away. Yeah. I will definitely be going lighter next set because that was a bit silly and that was a bit heavy. I got peer pressured by Harry. <laughs> It's getting that like, nice and short while we're fresh. See, the hardest position to get into is the short position. So if we do it first, we can make sure we definitely get there. Sweet. Everyone's got to guess now how many reps he's going to have in the tank left when he finishes, because it won't be zero. I'm going to say there's going to be each going to go, that was all right, one or two reps. That was hard. Oh, that was hard. I thought you could yeah. say that was all right. Yeah. How, how many reps do you have left? I'll probably have one more in the tank. See, I was right. Said one or two reps, or less in the tank. Oh, that's tough. I feel like I can't breathe. How do I, I wish there was a chair for me to lean back on. Do you want me to support you? Oh, you yeah. Oh, you're a bit heavy now. Yeah. <laughs> How do you hit calves? What are they? Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Don't. Okay, calf top three, three exercises. Top three calf There's exercises. Only two. Calf raise with a straight leg and a calf raise with a bent leg. Yeah, anything like anything allows, that allows you to load that movement effectively and comfortably is good enough. That's all you need to do is straight leg and bent leg. Done. See, I like if you have a straight leg calf raise that is loaded at the hip. Oh, yeah. So like if you use a leg press or like a donkey calf raise, yeah, yeah. something like that where you load at the hip so there's no spine loading but you also get to have a straight leg so you can essentially work the calves in that straight position without the spinal compression being a factor to consider pro tip just don't train them just don't train calves just don't train them I want to clarify do train calves and if my coach is watching this I'm sorry <laughs> is he short enough you can see on the camera get a vote in the comments down below does Harry shorten his lap enough on this exercise I can't see I can there's a mirror oh he does he does it's all good. We're laughing. Harry takes his sets very seriously, as you can tell. You can see the facial expressions. I've never seen a man so serious in my life. What do you say? I like talking it. when you can't hear me. It's good fun. I, I, I don't like it. Do I get really anxious what you're saying? I'm like, what's he saying about me? Well, you get to watch it back in that ear, so you know exactly Yeah, then I'm saying. like, wow, what a snake. Again, moving from a kind of mid peg, external peg press into a more of a clavicular fibre press now. The upper, basically an incline press for the upper, upper peg. Basically, we're going to press to go a bit higher on the boob because I want to get a big shell. We're doing this as a second pressing movement as the clavicular fibres are the smallest fibres of the chest. And actually, commonly, from what I've seen regarding development, some of the weakest. Good, one. Two, good balls at the bottom there. Three, good. Arm rider. Four, good. Five, good. He's a bit more weight on than my top set for a warm up. It's just rude. Yeah. Feel too close to the, the speaker. You what? Too close to the speaker. I might come stand back here. Hey guys, can you see me? Look at this. The ease he has pressed this with. This man. That's I hate him. Done. That'll do. What's one thing you've changed your opinion about with training? 
everything. That's a good look. Yeah, because I've changed my opinion about a lot. I changed my opinion about the lap pull down being put on the upper back and realised obviously based on biomechanics it, it's both upper back and lats depending on how you do it. That's a good one. I think that's the most recent thing I changed my mind on. Yeah, I would agree, I would agree. I think the thing, the biggest thing I've changed my opinion about about training, especially compared to last year to now, is that not every, like, when, when I come to understanding more of the science based approach to training, the optimal approach, I got a bit like uh, gatekeeping so you have to do things optimally. Then I realised, you come to realise that you can do things optimally but without intensity it doesn't mean anything. Thing. So I, like, I've kind of gone to the idea of I like to train this way, but I don't think you need to. I think for me, I prefer it because I can. I know I can match intensity accordingly, and then I can fill in the extra one percent I'm missing with optimization. But for most people, I think they just need to find movements they enjoy, get good at them, and train harder. I've mean, become a bit more open-minded with my approach to training. Do you feel, I would say volume for me. Before yeah. I met Harry, yeah. I used to just sma- like probably most of you did, just smash like four or five sets. Yeah, yeah. Every exercise. Yeah. None of them probably very hard, but just smash it, smash it, smash it. Yeah, yeah. Then I met Harry, and he was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> I was like, "Hang on, no In idea." Trouble. And then that's when I started like learning, dropped all the volume, and now I've made more progress in the past year than I have in the past well, four. The thing is, you don't need to do as much volume provided you're training hard enough, and I mean that hard enough, and you're also resting for long enough. So the research is actually supported. Resting longer means you can achieve better results doing less volume. Long rest periods, it's like we've never struggled with. We just rest Yeah, yeah I love a chat. I love a chat. You just chat a load of rubbish. Yeah, all the time. And low volume, which is an excuse to be a bit lazy. Yeah. Smash one set. Like, yeah, I, I also think there's an element of psychological like readiness going into like a movement, knowing you only have to do one or two sets. Because I, I feel like if I've only got one set, I might as well just give it the beans. Yeah, I find on a leg day, like before, if I'd be like hat squatting first, I would almost sandbag the first two hits of hat yeah, squat. Yeah. How many hat squat first? Because I've got, I know I've got four sets of hat squat, four sets of split squat, four sets of leg press, extensions, curls. Yeah, yeah. I used to sandbag the first exercise because I was like, oh my god, I don't want to do this. Now it's more so like I've only got two sets of this hack squat, so I need to make sure these two sets are nailed. The other thing that's interesting there is exercise sequencing. So if you're sandbagging the earlier movements, when research has obviously supported that, you get a better hypertrophy benefit from earlier movements versus later movements due to fatigue accumulation. You actually miss out on even more gains sandbagging earlier on rather than sandbagging later on. So what you just said is just sandbag the later movements, like yeah. calves. <laughs> no, like no. calves. That's not what. Sandbag them. That's what he said. That's all I heard. You're gonna clip get him. More clip him. That's what he said. You're gonna get more gains from earlier movements. Don't listen to him. He's a bad friend. And obviously we're not fresh now. This is third movement, so we're gonna be weak. We're What's weak. Not my t-shirt? Not very strong. I'm underslept. Uh, I'm gonna. But he has the wrist wraps on. But I haven't done them properly. I've got to get sand before I put them on properly. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen the video about wrist wraps and the sub- external support that it provides to the wrist. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me. It's crazy. It's an easy solution if you don't. It's one button, you click it, you can always change your mind if you don't want it. He is locked in wrist wraps because he's he's gone a bit heavier than he was meant to, but he thinks he's feeling strong. So wrist wraps are on, a little bit of little bit of extra help. A lot of weight, nearly double what I done. He is much heavier, much more experienced. Obviously the second chest pressing exercise of the day, so obviously a little bit fatigued, not exactly fresh, but that's how he goes. Harry's aiming for about five or six reps. Obviously we, as you tell, as you can tell from this session, we do tend to opt for the lower rep ranges, especially that sort of five to eight, maybe six to 10 range, especially on presses. Obviously as we know from a lot of studies, uh, all sets to failure or near to produce similar, if not the same, hypertrophy response. Yet those that are higher reps just tend to cause more fatigue. So especially in the pressing movements or the heavy stuff, a bit heavier, lighter reps, less fatigue, same stimulus, and you look really cool while doing it. There's a guy on TikTok called like No Fizzy Drink. No Fizzy Drink. Yeah, and basically at the start of like early lockdown, he basically cut out fizzy drinks from his diet to obviously as part of like his weight loss journey. It didn't change his diet, just cut out sugary drinks. Obviously that's then put you in a bit of a calorie deficit depending on how consistent Especially other variables are. Yeah. Drinks you have. But I think it's having a lot. And then he, he used to every day just track and like no fizzy drink, day 15 or whatever. I started following him from the start and he just posted a thousand days. And then it, like that's when I was like, wow. the hit me. I was like, wow, it's been that long. He's lost a lot of weight, he looks good. He looks like a lot healthier. I think that's, hits home just more like, do a small change. If you can do a small change for a thousand yeah. days, you can see a big change. Yeah, yeah, he's had a kid now. I'm gonna be honest with you. When he announced he was having a kid, I nearly cried. 
I'm fine with that. Do you I'm love this guy? Yeah, he's so sweet, man. He's so sweet. I love him. He's lost their weight. Yeah, no, like he's lost a fair chunk. But he just looks like healthier, more than anything, he just looks yeah. better. Shout out you, if you're watching, shout out you. Yeah, I want to say I love him. So I'm talking about like, Tempo Arts on TikTok. I actually rate Tempo Arts. What well. I actually rate him. I remember watching, he was posting the other day, he said like KSI messaged him. Was, like, yeah, I, I saw that earlier. He was well good. I remember watching the day and he's like, uh, we're having a kilo of mint every day. Yeah, uh, loads of fry. I love you. I really hope that it can pick up how much weight I'm lifting because I want everyone to know I'm strong. All right, guys, just let you know Harry's using the stack, mm -hmm. the full stack. And oh, that's quite heavy. I'm not gonna lie. Takes two arms to get in position. <clears throat> He's trying to get seven reps. Let's see if he can. Final chest exercise of the day. Machine flies. Chin and chest in a short position. There, that short position there, really hard. Not many other exercises do train the chest in a short position. You all right, you're okay? Not really got a lot to say about him. As you can see, he's got a bent elbow at the bottom, reducing the stress on the bicep, the chest, the shoulder tendons, all that good stuff. But then come into that straight arm at the end, so you can fully shorten the pecs. Obviously, because it's the only shortened movement we're doing, and one of the only shortened movements, you do want to milk that short position as much as possible like Harry is trying to do here as he's trying real, real hard. Milked. Short position, milked. Weight, slam, stack, use. That was nine. Hotel, Trivago. <laughs> Guys, I'm using the stack too. No, he's not. Harry, cut this bit out on trees, right? Is it weird you could say hello to your future self? Hello, future Harry? Editing it gives me anxiety. It is right. That's how I dance. This is the tricep exercise of the day. I'm scared. I'm scared. Tell my lover. Shout out Karen. I know you follow me on Instagram, I follow you too. She likes all the stories. Yeah, I love it, she's the best. I like her, can't wait to meet you one day. That's what my mum did, my mum commented, oh, that's my handsome boy. I was like, please, I do that, mum. Some of people start getting involved. Can we get everyone in the comments to say, that's my handsome boy to Harry? No, please don't, I'll cry. All right, let's do it. Good. 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 This is good. Nice. Again, similar sort of thing here is right, like Ryder mentioned earlier, bending the way back to take pressure off the biceps and straightening on the way forward. You think about what the upper arm is doing. Go on, Ryder. How bent your elbows is doesn't change the upper arm path. Yeah, still going through the same path. Oh, it's loud. Two totally different leg days per week, or is it okay to repeat certain exercises? It's okay to repeat certain exercises if you need to, or if you're limited to equipment. Do I have to speak so fast? Shut up. <laughs> but if you're going to do two of the same exercises in the week, like let's say leg press on both days, I'd either try and find variations of each, like a high stance versus a low stance, or I'd do different rep ranges. Or one unilateral, one not. Oh yeah. Which then makes it a new exercise technically, but if you're yeah. going to do the exact same exercise twice, I'd probably favor if you can, you don't need to, but I'd probably tickle doing different rep ranges. Maybe yeah. like a, a five to 10 and maybe a 12 to 15 or something. Are you recording? Yes. Yeah, jump in, jump in. How you doing, man? You good? Yes, sir. Um, Guys, I need a followers. Follow me on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined this gym about three years ago and he just joined when I did. So I'm working here. He's a PT here, he works here. Um, what a guy. What's the most effective cue you've been given for an exercise? We both came to the same conclusion on this one. Just going through like, the concentric phase as quick as possible on every single yeah. movement. Yeah, like, that, unless you're looking yeah. at like technique on like a squat or something. Like tempo you. work and but stuff. Literally, if like, you're in the bottom of the squat, just stand up as quick as you can. If you're pressing, just press as quick as you can. I then you will know when you get to the end of the set because you can no longer press quick. Yeah, I think ultimately like that applies to hypertrophy. We spoke about in the growth guide about the involuntary slowing of contractile velocity, where obviously that's good times hypertrophy, but also when looking at like power output for power lifting is why would you want to move weight slowly? You want to move weight as quickly as possible and use as much explosive power and force to complete the rep. So if you ever look at like when I bench press, as soon as it touches the chest, it's ready to explode. It's just speed. As long as it doesn't sacrifice technique and you can do so safely and efficiently, then literally move that weight after you've completed the eccentric in a controlled manner, move that weight through the concentric yeah. as quickly as you can. We're not saying rush for your exercise. Nah, don't do that. Like slow and then literally bang. Squeeze slow down faster than you're laughing. The next best QO I'm giving by Harry actually is just, just try harder. Just try harder. The amount of times I go, Harry can't do it, he goes, just try harder, and then that's it. 
Yeah, but tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. Most people give up mentally before they give up physically. And if you give up mentally, you're physically you're done as well. If you're gonna do anything, the way I will see things, I spoke of this before, actually I spoke of this when we failed our last video, is that whenever I'm doing a set, if I know it's gonna be like a heavy single or like a heavy set five on bench or something, I acknowledge that for the next 10 to 30 seconds of my life, I'm gonna hate it, I'm gonna be miserable. It's gonna be horrendously painful, horrendously slow and awful. But I only have to tolerate that for 30 seconds. If I can tolerate it for 30 seconds, I'm done. So literally just to acknowledge you're gonna have the worst time of your life for the next 10 to 30 seconds. Maybe not the worst time. Well, you'll have, you have a pretty bad time for the next 10 to 30 seconds. And after it's done, it's done. Sorted. Do you know, I like that mindset. I think about a lot of things. If I'm never nervous about anything, I'm like, right, I look at my phone, and be like, right, this is over in an hour. Like, even if it's like an hour, I'm like, oh, an hour, sweet. And then in two hours time, I'm You're gone. home and you're chilling again. Like, yeah. We're back. We're on the floor. They took low row to a, a whole new level. I've never rode so low. <laughs> Finishing off the session with an upper back movement. Oh my god. Because lats are a priority. So they're going first. This movement goes last. It's the least stable. Is that hard to like? Oh. Let me get started first. So yeah, like I said, this is this movement's going last because it's the least stable, as there's no chest support, no back support, no nothing. It's just pure core stability to stay upright. And upper back is the lower priority of the back for us, for both of us, coincidentally. So it just goes last. Doesn't mean it's like not I like it's not, obviously, it's not a priority, but it doesn't mean it's like sandbag, doesn't mean it's like less important. It just means one movement has to go last, and this is the one we have chose for the reasons I've just said. But we're still gonna try quite hard. Well, I'm gonna try as hard as possible. I feel like I probably had one or two left in the table, but yeah. my range of motion was getting a bit short. Not short enough for me to cry about it, but enough to be like, mm, don't push it. Well, see, the end of the session, so getting short is gonna be a lot harder. Row, row, row your boat gently down the street. It's the worst thing to get into because you look so uncomfortable. Yeah, but what is it? This is a good position. Um, so the big thing here is trying to keep that row between 45 and 90 degrees. I use the upper arm is about 45 to 90 degrees. Oh, the upper arm angle. Oh, that's heavy. Yes, yeah, heavy. So the upper arm angle. So obviously, yeah, the armpit is about 45 to 90 degrees. Shift emphasis onto the upper back. I'm aiming more towards the 90 mark, but it's easier said than done. I did get a bit of momentum with this movement, because otherwise my range of motion is going to be a bit limited. If I get a bit of momentum, I can retract this. Oh, my God. Go and give it a bit of a swing. Just a little one. Control momentum. Oh. In doing so, I can actually go through a greater range of motion without sacrificing technique or risk of injury. Yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, ask us questions, Instagram, YouTube comments, wherever it may be. And you enjoy if it. you want to see us do some things, show you some things and answer some things, then we'll do it. Thanks for tolerating us. Thanks for tolerating a very loud gym. And thanks for tolerating the video. We love you.